Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lost in the Real, the director series, where we hand choose a single director and review each and every one of their films chronologically. At the very end of each series, we will rank each and every one of these films from the worst to the best. If you haven't seen it already, we have part one of our series of Xavier Delon right up here, so check that out if you haven't already. In this episode, we will be going over 2013's Lawrence Anyways. So, uh, after the big success of his first two films at the festivals and elsewise, Zebra Dolan took a few years off and then came back in 2013 with Lawrence Anyways, uh, which is a nearly three-hour epic romantic drama film uh, that charts ten years in a relationship between a trans woman and her lover. And it stars Melville Poupeau, Suzanne Clément, and Nathalie Bay. Before we share with you our thoughts on Lawrence anyways, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video if you liked it, and also comment down below and let us know what your thoughts on this film are. We'd love to hear what you have to say at Lost in the Real. Now, on to the review. So, Chris, what did you think of Lawrence anyways? All right, so this was my only second time seeing this. Um, but back when I did see it, when it was released, it was on my top 10 that year. Mm -hmm. um, and this viewing may have been even better. Um, mm -hmm. This viewing actually moved this film onto my top 25 list for the 2010s, the entire decade. Um, I think this is a like massively successful, like super impressive uh, piece of work. This is great cinema, pure cinema. Yeah, I mean, I'll just start from there. Like. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you feel about this? So this is actually probably my fourth or fifth time watching the movie. Uh, out of all of his films, I've seen this one the most. I think it is just one of the most shockingly beautiful films I have ever laid my eyes on. Uh, there is just imagery in this movie that I have not forgotten since I saw it the first time, and it's still just as effective on every single uh, viewing. And also, I just connect with these characters on such a deep level, and I was rooting for them to succeed throughout these three hours, and it really just makes the runtime seem so short uh, in, compar in comparison to how actually long it is. Uh, I just absolutely love this film. Uh, what are your thoughts on the length of the movie? I could have watched this film for three times as long, five times as long. Uh, I don't know. I don't really look at films in terms of length unless they're, you know, overly obnoxious or so horribly made that you can't even bear to pay attention. But this reminded me of something like Magnolia, which you know is one of my absolute favorites. Um, but this is also the third film from a really talented filmmaker. Um, and it's also the most ambitious and the longest and most sprawling. But yeah, on top of what you said, you know, aesthetically, like it's gorgeous. Um, and you see a different kind of thing here, too, with the slow motion, because you don't notice that it's slow motion. Like, it seems to have a purpose, and it's so entrancing. Like, you get enraptured by this movie. I think this is a really great film. Um, but aside from the visual pleasures, like, this, this could have looked like on a home video. And I mm -hmm. would have still loved it because the characters are so great. They're, like, they're real people. And I yes. connect with them so deeply my emotional response to this film was really overwhelming i had to like really collect myself and i don't mean that i was like sad i was just overwhelmed by life like memories from my own life and thinking of people and i don't know this is the like that's one of the main reasons why we seek out art is to experience like emotional reactions like this I think with without the length of the film, I, we wouldn't have been able to get as close with these characters. And I think the the length allows the Lawrence's transition 
into a woman to really feel extremely realistic as he explores his metamorphosis. It just seems so raw and you're just in along on the ride with him as he's going through this as well as with his lover, uh, Frederic. Uh, and I just thought the two of them, these two performers, I don't know what Xavier Dolan brought out of them, but they have this chemistry that explodes off of the screen. It's so palpable. Yeah. And you just understand and feel their love for each other. And you understand why Fred uh, would go along this ride with Lawrence and she would stick with him through it all because of the love that she has for him. Yeah, this is a... Uh... Like, it's not simply a piece of queer cinema or, like, just a film about a trans woman. It's a film about life and about connection uh, to others and to yourself and about love and pain and loss. One thing I have to say, and I said the two performances are, are outstanding and they are just top-notch performances, but I really walking away from watching it this time i was like i cement suzanne clement's performance in this to be one of my favorite performances of all time there is something about her that just like it's like suzanne clement took every emotion and feeling that she's ever felt in her life and she laid it out bare for every viewer to see and it's yeah. just it's a performance for the books it's just incredible yeah, she's really great here. Uh, Natalie Bai as um, Lawrence's mother. And they have some interactions in this film that are amongst the most powerful um, mother-daughter interactions that I've seen. Yeah, that one line, that one line, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It literally it sends chills down my spine every single time. Every time. Where Lawrence is telling her mother how she saw her like just as a woman in the house. Like she never really recognized her as her mother. And then Natalie Bai says, and I never saw you as my son, but I do see you as my daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's great. I mean, and that just shows you what tenderness uh, Xavier Alon gives to his characters and how fully realized they are, that you get to see into these characters' past in just this one moment that they never connected as a mother and a son, but now later on in their lives, they are now able to connect as a mother and a daughter. It's beautiful. This kind of filmmaking is the kind of filmmaking to me that kind of transcends what it's about because mm. it is so universal you can see moments from your own life in this from you know interacting with your own family members about various things in life and I think I sent you this interview with Xavier Dolan about this film where he says you know that he recognizes the value of what is labeled as queer cinema but that he does not make queer cinema he mm. makes cinema that is, you know, about queer people. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting that for I Killed My Mother, he said how people made such a big deal about the synopsis of the film being about a gay son who's trying to have his mom understand who he is and coming to terms with it, when that's really not what it's about. It's about the relationship between a mother and a son. It mm -hmm. could be the same, the same could be said here, where this isn't a movie about the metamorphosis of a, uh, a trans woman, uh, even though that's a part of the story, yeah. it's really about the love of these two and the relationship that they have with each other. Yeah, I think in this interview as well, um, he talks about how these first three films are kind of a trilogy about mm -hmm. impossible love. So then the first being about impossible love between a mother and a son, and then the second mm -hmm. being this impossible love triangle. And then this one being impossible love between lovers. And All right, Sean, so what would you rate uh, out of five Zebra Dolan faces, what would you rate Lawrence anyways? Um, I think 
literally everything comes together here for Dolan. Uh, his choices in music, his experimental prowess, uh, his brash in your face melodrama, his undying obsession with beauty, his exceptionally flawed but tenderly realized characters. This movie just shows you what sheer talent Xavier Dolan has as a filmmaker and as a storyteller. Uh, and I really do believe that this is an unforgettable epic masterpiece. I cannot say any more incredible words about it. Uh, and this is gonna be the first time I do this on this channel. Uh, so this is a special moment, but I will be giving Lawrence anyways, five out of five. <laughs> So, Chris, what would you rate Lawrence anyways out of five? Uh, well, I think I made myself pretty clear in my review, uh, which was pretty devoid of any actual criticism. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was, like, highest rating, easily, five out of five. Um, this is him, uh, Dolan, working uh, in the gray. Like, I know there there are moments of high melodrama here, but there's also the gray of like real human behavior where mm -hmm. there's no like stance on this or that and people are allowed to make mistakes and be crazy and get emotional and react in ways that we don't expect it's a really special film it's uh it's truly great Thank you so much, guys, for watching Lost in the Real, the director series. Make sure to tune in next week where we review Xavier Delon's film, Tom at the Farm. We will see you next time.